All right, Top Billing, coming up, I'm going to show you why my man Grant Delpit would change the fortunes of Atlanta's secondary with his ability to play a single high role. All right, so keep in mind with the lead up to the draft, I'm attempting to remake the Falcons roster in the mold of Seattle, which the defensive scheme is based on under head coach Dan Quinn. So we're talking about the secondary here. And to me, the most important player in the secondary or probably on the entire defense, being as though this is a defensive back heavy scheme because they are required to cover a third of the field. That would be this post safety right here, popularized by Earl Thomas. You see a three deep coverage here. This guy in the middle of the field has to be able to arrive with a bang. He has to be able to play in reverse and he needs a ton of range. That's something that the Falcons severely lack um, especially if you're talking about playing a DeMonte KZ. Now, look at that. Look at this guy's ability to break on the ball right here from a post safety position. Look at the ground covered and the instincts. Check it out. The instincts to be able to get there, break up this pass, and break up Rob Gronkowski's soul. We see it again here. Got to be able to get there. This thing is about instincts, it's about physicality, but man, the, the instincts portion of it, you cannot take for granted. But let's contrast that with Devontae KZ right here. Now listen, I'm not cherry picking or anything that these dumbass people were saying in the first part of this video. This man is rarely, if ever, there, right? I could go on and on doing these type of clips. You see, this is not the clips that I was using before, but when it comes to being a post safety, he just does not have the instinct and range to be there. You see, he's a day late and a dollar short. Day late and a dollar short. Check it out right here. Play action pass. He, Damon's pretty much telegraphs this and he's still. Look how far away he is. Day late and a dollar short. All right, here we go again. And all it took was short motion on this side to get his entire attention. Look at him. Just looking at the short motion. Jameis goes backside. He's nowhere to be found. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Nor am I cherry picking. I said before, I like KZ at an inside corner. He deserves to definitely be on the roster. No doubt about that. But I'll go a step further and say he deserves to start. But at an inside corner spot. All right, check this out. Double post into a single high coverage. So he's pretty much running it at him. And then he sprints out to one side and KZ is late even thinking about that. This one's painful to watch because Jameis sprinting out to one side of the field eliminates one side of the field that you don't even have to cover. And he still is not there. That's all I'm saying. This guy is not a post safety. But I think Grant Delpit could change the Falcons fortune in that aspect. Let's get to it. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, so remember, I'm only concentrating on Grant Delpit's role as a single high safety. We know that LSU plays a ton of split coverage as well, and they'll drop him down the box. He's just super versatile. Him and Xavier McKinney, the two most versatile safeties in this draft, but they're a little bit different. Whereas Xavier McKinney's good playing on the inside, guarding tight ends, man-to-man -man and everything like that, Grant Delpit can be a free safety and also do the type of stuff that is required as a free safety in a cover three scheme. So, you could essentially have both Xavier McKinney and Grant Delpit on the same team. And, um, Xavier McKinney will be the strong safety, the Cam Chancellor in a scheme like that. But here's Grant Delpit right here. Check him out. Single high safety, right? Aligned right up over the quarterback. And it's your ability to read. So you guys know that I'm not showing anything full speed. So don't even ask. So here we go right here. Front face and play action fake. Now look at that. Immediately his instinct's going to send him to this nine route. Whereas I think KZ at the time will probably still be squatting. I'm just going to be honest with the situation right here. So this guy's telegraphing, but look how far he had to come over. Remember, he's in the middle of the field. He's in the middle of the field, comes back past the hash. Jordan Tomu throwing a nine route to, I believe, DK Metcalf being guarded by Greedy Williams. Look how far he has to come over. Right? I wish I could find DeMonte KZ doing this. And having this type of range. Look at this. He comes all the way over to the sideline and picks this pass off. That's some crazy range. All the way over to the sideline, giving help. Right? Man free. They were playing man free. So a single high safety and man coverage underneath. And he helps out. So remember what I said before. If you don't have a, a free safety or a post safety with that type of range, it's essentially playing cover zero all the time. And that makes everything extremely hard. No help over the top cover zero. That is insane to play in the NFL. Got to have a guy with some range on the back end. And got to have a guy with some instinct. 
All right, we see him again right here at a post safety, working from the near hash, shooting all the way out to the numbers. Now, this was a poorly thrown pass by Kellen Mond. However, if, you, if you're not there, it doesn't matter how poor the ball is or how poorly thrown it is. Look at him. Immediately shoots that way. Something told him that in film study that they were going to flood this side of the field. So he helped himself out by already being there. Now, look, the range, the instinct takes him there. Floating that bad boy just so happened. I'm not sure what Kellerman was throwing this to, but he's able to pick it off right there on the numbers. And if the ball's in, in his just general vicinity, uh, he's going to pick it off. The guy has great hands. All right, here's the same play you can see with the rolling coverage, but I always like this because you can really see from this angle the amount of ground cover coming from that hash over there working all the way towards the numbers. Look how far he had to go to get this pass. And you wouldn't want that. A guy six foot two, two hundred and thirteen pounds. So imagine that you go from right. People say Ricardo Allen's trash or whatever like that. I don't believe that. I like Ricardo Allen a lot, but he's like five eight, five nine, one hundred and eighty pounds. KZ's like five eight, five nine, one hundred and seventy pounds. You would get your free safety at six foot two, two hundred and thirteen pounds with that type of range and instinct, right? And hopefully a guy like Keanu Neal can stay healthy on the back end and he's able to do the stuff that the strong safeties do, guarding the tight ends and everything. You get that much more length on the field. Stuff happens, man. I like it. It's a, I, I think it would be a genius move. All right, here we see him here working as a single high safety. Uh, I think it was back in 2017 when he was a freshman, going against Shea Patterson, intercepting the ball over DK Metcalf. Front facing play action fake. And a fake on the orbit motion here. So he's riding the middle of the field until the middle of the play where Shea Patterson looks it off. Now, check this out right here. So now he's looking at DK Metcalf, who has Kevin Tolliver beat. I look at him break on the ball. It was a poor throw by Shea Patterson. I, I don't think he saw him, but he tries to push the ball up field, and look who's right there. And like I said before, if it's there, he's going to catch the ball. That's just what he does. Goes up over DK Metcalf. Y'all know him on the Seattle Seahawks. Yep. Showing that range, showing that instinct. All right, another thing that I like about his ability to work post safety is to be able to deliver physical hits as well. So having somebody back there that can punish like a strong safety, but at a post safety position, which is normally a finesse position. Check this out. Going to Jay Sternberger here. He dislodges this man from his soul. Boom. Hit him with a legit stool softener. Look at that. Right there, your boy is already somebody checked that man's draws. That was a big time hit. Come and look at that head on the outside, lower that pad level, hat right on the ball. Sternberger visiting that toilet that night with a smooth move. No problems on the toilet that night. All right, last one here picking off Jordan Love from Utah State going up to get the ball. It's not a good angle on this one, so I have to show it and use what I got, but it is what it is. But you see him working a 50-50 exchange situation. Goes up over the receiver. Strong hands, bringing it down. Can't even get it to his body, but still being able to keep that bad boy secured. Makes the pick. Here it is from a different angle. See him working the center field. That length, six foot two out of free safety. Be worth his weight in gold, man. All right, so there you have it. My man, Grant Delpit. And full disclosure, I'm a huge fan of Grant Delpit. I had this cat on my podcast when he was in high school. Uh, he came out here to Gwinnett to play a game when he was at IMG Academy. And I was covering LSU for the scout.com site at the time. So I had to go do film studies on him. Uh, man, he was nice as could be. A hell of a good player. I knew he was going to be real dope. He wasn't quite on the national radar at the time. He was by the time he finished his senior season. And look at him, man. Coming into this season, this is why this guy will hold great value. I'm not sure where he's um, valued at right now, whatever like that. I'm not the type to even really give a fuck about a mock draft, to be honest with you. I think it's hilarious that people care about these guys and they'll say, so-and-so is moving up and down the draft board. That shit is it doesn't it's an imaginary thing. How can you move up and down some shit that's imaginary? You don't know where these guys are gonna get picked. That's so people kill me with that, but I don't hear hear as much buzz about him as as you should be. He's the reigning Thorpe Award winner, and coming into the season, you could argue that he was the best defensive player in college football coming into the season. Didn't have as good a year, in my opinion, 
He was dealing with a high ankle sprain, and to me it showed up on his work. But I know the type of talent that he has, super versatile guy who I said before could be a strong safety, but will work best to me as a free safety in the league because he has that coveted range that a lot of people just don't have. So him in a three-deep coverage as a free safety – would just add a ton of value. You can do a lot of rotational stuff with him, dropping him down, putting another guy at free safety. Uh, he could work in conjunction with the Ricardo Allen. He could fill in for a Keanu Neal at strong safety. He can do a lot of shit. So he has a ton of value. That's what I look for. So I know people want me to talk about the pass rushers and everything, but I think people are overlooking this. And people know just enough to be dangerous. They're like, oh, you got to get a pass rusher. Well, to me, if you're not getting Javon Kenlaw and all these guys, Right? I don't even look at it that way. It's line of scrimmage play. If you're not getting Javon Kinlaw or Derek Brown or somebody like that, to me, these other guys, you can have them in the second and third round. There's guys in the second and third round I know who can put pressure on the quarterback. But beyond that, safeties are super important. People think that people are getting 800 sacks or something like that. They may play 1,000 snaps in a season and get 10 sacks and six pressures. Most of the time, people aren't getting pressure. So you got to have somebody on the back end who is an eraser. That's why Earl Thomas is going to the Hall of Fame and Ed Reed and, guy, Ed Reed and guys like that. So take that for what it's worth, all right? But as always, it's your boy Murph Baldwin, the underground king, top billing sports. I'll be back with some more. Let me know who you want to see next. Uh, maybe we can get it done like that, all right? With that being said, I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.